Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I want to talk about how valuable a simple piece of terminal tackle can be to helping you modify your existing baits to not only make you more efficient, but also help you fish more effectively on the water. One of my favorite mods to do to a lot of different baits. So I'm going to give you a bunch of the different ways that I do it, a bunch of the different baits that I like to modify. And I assure you, this is something that a lot of professional anglers are doing to give them a little bit more of an advantage on the water and help them catch a few more fish. So we're going to break that down for you. But before I do get into that, I want to remind you that I do have a Tackle Warehouse affiliate link in the video description for you. So if you want to support the channel and you're looking to make a tackle purchase, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link to make those purchases. The little bit that I make from that comes right back into making more content for the channel, which hopefully helps a bunch of people catch a few more fish. All right, so let's talk about one of my absolute favorite pieces of terminal tackle. That is this guy right here. This little tiny piece of tungsten is called a nail weight. And there's a bunch of different types of nail weight on the market. I personally prefer tungsten ones because they're smaller in size, but at the same time, uh, add more weight. So you can use lead, you can use a bunch of different things. Uh, I will say some people out there like to use actual nails. I'm not a huge fan of that because I do feel like if there's a nail on the ground and somebody steps on it, that could lead to potential issues. But having said that, I also recognize the fact that these little guys can be pretty sharp too, and stepping on these isn't that much different than a nail in itself. But having said that, I like to use the tungsten one. So this one right here is a 16th of an ounce, not a whole lot of weight, but it is a pretty substantial amount of weight in terms of helping to modify your baits. And one of the things here that I love about nail weights is that they can be used on so many different types of tackle, so many different baits. I think a lot of people really find that nail weights right now are used more for creating a NACO rig. And NACO rig is where you wacky rig a bait, stick the nail weight into one end of it and therefore you kind of have a weighted wacky rig so when it falls and obviously I would stick that all the way up but when it falls it falls faster but yet you can kind of work it like a wacky rig. So a NACO rig is a very popular technique these days and I would say that's where the majority of nail weights tend to go. Now having said that I'm not necessarily going to sit here and say that the weight has to go in the tail. I tend to fish more nail weights in my soft stick worms in the center of the bait. So I'll actually insert it right down the middle, right in that same area where I'm going to actually have my hook. So it's in this general region. I've got my hook here, so it's still wacky rigged. But the reason I like to do that is the weight is in the center. So when it falls, you get more vibration out of the arms. It just tends to hold up better. And you can still fish it in a traditional weightless wacky rig profile. So don't be afraid to play around with position of the nail weight in the worm. Does not have to just go in the tail to be like a, a NACO uh, rig. It can be placed almost anywhere in the worm in any type of worm. Uh, it doesn't have to be just a soft stick bait. But I would say that's probably where the majority of your nail weights tend to go. Now, having said that, I've got some other baits I want to walk you through how I like to use nail weights to help me change the weight and positioning of the bait. One of those is a vibrating jig. So this is a Berkeley slobber knocker here. One thing that I find with a lot of vibrating jigs is they tend to ride up in the water column. And a lot of times for me, I tend to get more bites the deeper I can keep my bait. So whether that's uh, just bouncing off the bottom in three feet of water, or maybe I want to keep my bait down in eight feet of water. The point is adding a little bit of weight into your trailer. So I'll actually take the nail weight and insert it right into the body. And I'll do that again. I would slide this all the way down, but just so you can see it, I'll do it underneath the hook shank so that it stays completely out of the gap of the hook. And all it does is keep more weight at the bottom of the bait. The also thing the other reason you want to do it on the bottom of the bait is you want to make sure that that weight keels the bait and it does not help your bait roll. If you put the weight up top, 
your bait might actually tend to want to roll over and therefore not run perfectly straight or the way you want it to. But I really like to add nail weights to vibrating jigs. I also really like to do it to swim jigs. If I'm just looking to keep my bait down a little bit extra, you can add your nail weights. <clears throat> and a lot of times with both of those style of baits, you want to make contact with either the bottom or objects in that area. And it's that deflection that allows you to generate those reaction strikes. From that standpoint, adding a little bit extra weight will help you make contact with objects. So don't think you shouldn't be doing that. And yes, you can go up in weight size of say your vibrating jig or your swim jig, but not everyone carries the next size heavier. Or in some instances, there isn't another size heavier. The other thing I'll say is I tend to prefer to have the weight displaced more in the back of the bait, which gives the bait more movement than just having a larger, clunkier head, which tends to anchor the bait more. So you will get more movement uh, with a heavier bait than you would if you were going with just a bigger jig head on your bait. Another bait that I love to throw uh, nail weights with are your soft jerk baits. So in this case, this is a power jerk and I'll go ahead and generally I'll place the weight uh, right above the hook shank. So I'll just kind of go more in the head. So I'll slide it right up in this region here. And really what I'm doing is I'm just trying to add a little bit of weight that will help me get my soft jerk baits down just a little bit deeper. So whether you like the power jerk or your zoom flukes, whatever it is, adding a little bit of weight can really help. The other thing you don't necessarily have to take the nail weight and insert it long ways. With your uh, smaller nail weights, you can insert it straight through as well. And that's a good way to do it too. They tend to uh, not come out nearly as much and they tend to not have as much potential impact in affecting your hook set. So if I can get away with adding smaller nail weights where I'll actually insert them on the side, just like that, I'll do that. In this case, the 16th ounce is a little bit too wide. It would stick out on both sides, but you could use two smaller, say 30 second ounces to equal the 16th ounce. The other thing is <clears throat> if you're doing that, don't be afraid to add multiple nail weights. You can insert one behind the hook. You can insert one in front of the head. You can really play around with your weight positioning to help you get the desired action that you're looking for. So don't be afraid to play around with it either. All right. So next up, this one is kind of a traditional method of adding a little bit of weight to the frogs. Uh, a lot of people like to use, like insert glass beads. Some people like to do little lead split shots. I actually prefer to do nail weights for two reasons. One, you get more weight in a smaller amount of area. But two, I also feel like the sound that I get from the tungsten hitting off the hook shank in the belly provides me with a better sound than the dull thud of say a lead split shot bouncing around in a rubber hollow belly frog. Uh, but they're really easy to do. You just turn the frog around, you can kind of separate it from the hook and you can insert it right down the belly just like that. Really simple way to add some weight to your frog. And again, a lot of times I'm looking to add pretty significant weight to my frogs and I can do that much more effectively with tungsten over lead. Uh, so a lot of times with frogs, depending on how thick the mats are that I'm fishing, I might be adding significant weights. So several tungsten nail weights into my frogs. But uh, don't overlook tungsten for your frogs. The next way that I really like to do it is when I'm fishing bigger soft swim baits. So whether it's a, a big swim bait like this guy, or maybe a glide bait like the new Nessie. The point here is you shouldn't be afraid to add a little bit of weight in various places in your Nessie or your soft uh, swim baits. And you can do it really easily in a couple of manners. So if you've got a bigger bait like the Nessie, I would actually insert either from the belly up or from the back down. In either case, you want to get that weight centered more towards the bottom, just depends on how far you need to push it down, but you can really just insert these things, you know, right down the back, just like that, if you wanted to, and you can insert four or five of them if you want. The point here is, 
Uh, if you've got a bait that you want to run a little bit deeper, or maybe you're based on the depth that your swim bait is running, maybe it's running a little bit like this because you've got a really heavy head and you want to weight the back end, you can do that to get it more horizontal. Maybe you're fishing super deep with a lighter weight hook and when it's coming through the water column, it's riding more like this and you want to keep that head down. You can add more weight in the front. The point here is, generally speaking, I feel like your swim baits are much better off when it's coming through the water column more horizontal than nose up or nose down. <clears throat> and by adding a few nail weights into certain locations, you can go ahead and change that positioning. Just something to keep in mind. Another one would be uh, along that same line, like this is a grass pig, a Berkeley grass pig. Really good bait for fishing through heavy vegetation. A lot of times people would put a small uh, Texas rig bullet weight in the front to help it come through that vegetation. You can remove the need for that by putting the nail weight right into the head. Just don't overlook how important a nail weight can be. A little bit of weight can go a long distance. It can help you modify uh, a bait to meet your expectations and it can help you modify baits so that you can present them in the appropriate manner based on the type of water that you're fishing. In either case, I carry loads and loads of these tungsten nail weights in my boat. I'm constantly using them and constantly modifying my baits. And I think you'd be surprised how little weight is needed to effectively change the way your bait is running. So give it a try, guys. If you haven't, I would highly recommend it. If you enjoyed today's video, I would say hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.